This is Next Radio. With Broadcast Bionics, innovative solutions for creative people. Good afternoon. Um, as, you, as you just heard, um, I was told don't do any graphs. Um, so I didn't really. Um, Rajar, uh, I'm sure I don't have to tell you that it stands for Radio Joint Audience Research. Uh, and the key words for me are radio audience. And that's obviously what I've been asked to talk about today. Uh, as you also know, I've no doubt, that we get new data or refreshed data, dependent on the station, uh, every three months. And the one word that we all hear every time Rajar comes out over and over again is up. I guess we're bound to, really, aren't we? Because we hear it from the commercial groups who need advertisers to feel confident about placing money with them, and, of course, with that group in particular. And the BBC wants us to make, be comfortable about where our licence fees are being spent. Uh, the figures on the screen, I'm sorry if you can't read them, are actually true. Over the last five years in the UK, the radio audience is up 3.2 million listeners. Hours are up a massive 117.1 million hours. Why is it that I spend most of my time getting phone calls and emails from programmers who say to me, where have my listeners gone? Where are my hours going? Um, I'm not... In, uh, and I'm not going to knock radio, uh, the radio figures, because actually, the radio numbers, as we all know, are still remarkably good, considering how much media change is going on, technology, different platforms, etc., etc. However, if you're going to be a winner in this marketplace, you do need to exploit all the tools at your disposal. And Rajar... As much as people say, what have Rajar done to me? Sorry, Paul and Jerry. Um, it is a great resource. And going back to those numbers, reach is up. True. Hours are up. True. However, um, you do sometimes just have to go back a little bit to the population base. Uh, or go back to the base figures. For example, the population base is up. 5%. Reach is up 7% overall over those five years. But actually, that's now spread. That reach is spread over more stations. I don't just mean physically more stations, because there haven't been masses of new stations in the last five years. But they are spread because people are listening to more stations in their repertoire. And overall hours, although it was 117 million, is only a 1.2% rise. So with population up 5% and reach up 7% and hours only up 1%, our average time spent with the medium, hate the word average, but the average time spent with the medium is actually down. And it's down in some very interesting and key demographics. Um, we all know about young people losing the radio habit, that's well documented, but there are starting to be some signs of trends now in groups like 45, 54s, 65 plus women, and so on. So it is quite important that you do always examine universe numbers as well as your own data, because if we don't, it's very difficult to see how you fit into the total picture. Uh, I'm going to look at some generalizations across radio, and I'm going to ask you to ask yourselves, do I know the answers to these questions? Do I know the answer about my marketplace, my stations, and my competitors? Before we get too far into that, let's just go back on a couple of bits. More stations are being listened to in the average week. Men were doing that quite quickly, and it sort of accelerated a little bit. But now women have caught up very, very quickly. The average woman now is listening to more stations in the last five years than she ever did. 
Interestingly, as part of that, and I guess one's a corollary of the other in a way, the number of listeners that only listen to one station in a week is, fall, is, is actually falling. And what do I mean by that? If you take everybody's soulless radio listeners, that used to come five years ago to about a third of all radio listeners. So five years ago, a third of all radio listeners listened to just one station in a week. That's now dropped to about a quarter, i.e. just 25%. That bit alone has released 59 million hours to now spread amongst other radio stations. If you take that to individual radio stations, individual types of radio stations, uh, it reflects, for example, for an average IR, an average commercial local station, they used to have about 10% of their listeners who listened to them and nothing else in a week. That's about 8% now. BBC Local, which was always strong with 20% solus listening, is down to about 16%. Uh, and of course, solus listeners are those that are giving you the longest hours. If you sort of break it down now, and I've just taken a London FM station, um, Solus listeners, 8.5%, this is from their latest radar, uh, and then 55, 56% of their listeners are now listening to them plus two, three, four stations. And, over, and you get to 60 plus percent by the time they're also including a total of six stations, i.e. them plus five. So that's a lot of spread of listening, and therefore, spread of hours. Just take it one thought for that. Um, how long are your listeners actually listening? And it goes back to that word average, because it's a word that I mistrust in many respects. Because on average... I use it again. Half of your listeners listen for less than half your published, av uh, published hours. So let's just think about that for a moment. Half your listeners are listening for less than half your published hours. Let's just take a look at that. For example, an average ILR station, this is just taking them from the national figures, has an average hours published of about 11 so more than half their listeners are listening for five or six hours. Not 11, five or six. BBC Local has about nine average. Some are much, much higher than that. Some are quite lower. Um, so, and about 52% of those are listening four to five hours a week. National Commercial, who've never had the longest listening hours, uh, about eight now, and 53% of those are listening three to four. Uh, BBC Networks, somewhat lucky, of course, because you've got Radio 2, Radio 4 in the mix and so on, uh, have an average hours of about 14, 14 hours a week published, um, and 44% of those listen still for less than half that average. So if we take that ILR station that's got half its listeners listening for less than five hours a week. Just imagine for a second all of those average half-hour graphs. Now imagine all of them spread out for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, through the seven days of the week, and five hours a week is only ten points in those average half-hour graphs. They might all come together, they might be spread out a bit, but it's pretty hard to spot sometimes where those listeners are. Okay, and do you exploit in your radar data where the total available audiences are? Do you ever look at the number of total listeners that are listening to the radio at any time of the day, who they are, what numbers they're available in, and when changes take place? And do you for argument's sake, um, apply or account for that in how you make adjustments to the format in your own station. Here's a couple of points that I thought were quite interesting. Um, just taken off the national figures. For example, at what time in the mornings, Monday, Friday, 
does your female audience pass your male audience in terms of total numbers? Can you answer that question? And on a national basis, for quite interestingly, um, at half past five in the evening, there are as many 1544 women listening to the radio as there are at eight o'clock in the morning. But if you take the other half of the female population, the 45 pluses, at eight o'clock in the morning, there are twice as many 45 plus women listening to the radio then than there are at half past five in the evening. I thought those two were quite interesting. So what are your patterns in your TSA at the weekends? What are available listeners, available levels of listening possible that you might get in the evenings? And at what time are different audiences available? And what, for example, do your listeners tune into when they have the radio on, but they're not tuned into you? Which stations might be stealing your hours? Which might be pinching a few more this radar than they did last radar? We're all very good at examining our own radar figures. They, of course, tell us when our listeners are listening to us. But your listeners generally do an awful lot more listening to the radio than they do just listening to your station. Not all, but most. Do we examine what competitive stations they listen to, when those competitive stations are getting their attention, which demographics are going where and when, and in what quantities. Because this is where hours disappear. Hours disappear, and if you're not careful, the, eventually the reach will follow that. And are we then thinking about what the competitor is doing that's attracting our listener, or is it something we're doing which might be helping a competitor attract our listener. Um, I did have to put a graph in. It wouldn't be right not to. Um, <laughs> this is an average half-hour graph of, the, of uh, a London FM radio station from this radar. The red bars are, is their average half-listen. Imagine that as a line. It would, and this is just breakfast, 6 to 10. That's their average audience listening to them. All of the bits are the average half-hours and all of the bits in between are their listeners listening to other services. And that's only a small selection of what's available to, of course, the London listeners. Some are FM competitors, plus, of course, the BBC. And as you can see, many of them reaching quite deeply into that station's audience, even at that successful time. We can look at it another way, and what this graph is doing, for example, and it's the same radio station, uh, the red is the current radar, and the blue is uh, the radar from five years back. And what it's looking at is saying, what proportion of my listeners that have the radio on are actually tuned in to me? Uh, the, red li and the blue line, in the, uh, you could see, uh, when it was reaching a high there, had about 35%. Um, of the station's listeners tuned to it. That's now dropped to about 25%, and at other times it drops a little bit lower. So what that's sort of saying is that at those points, 25% or 30% of my listeners that have the radio on are tuned in to me. The other bit, of course, is that 75% or 70% are tuned somewhere else. It's not they don't have the radio on, they're somewhere else. And you can track what, that's, what that somewhere else is. You can see what competitive services they are listening to and are they doing more of it or less than it, than it. This is the same radio station and a competitor. The blue line is that station's listeners listening to a competitor five years ago. And now the proportion of the listeners listening now. And it's gone from 6% that were tuned away five years ago, to now 12% are tuned away to that competitor. So where are my hours going? Um, so what all of that says is that Rajar is a very rich source of data, very rich source of information about your listeners and their behaviour. 
It is a treasure chest. Please don't miss out on its resources. Thank you. Really interesting to think about the numbers. Most of us look at kind of reach and hours and understand um, basically what our audience is doing when they're listening to us. But what about when they're not? I knew that today I've been to the next radio before and you know that it's always going to be a mixture of graphs and presentation and creative thinking. Uh, and I like all those things. I love the graphs. <laughs> uh, what I've enjoyed the most today has been being able to meet people and being here in this amazing place with all these radio professionals. This is Next Radio. Was broadcast by Onyx. Innovative solutions for creative people.